What is up ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another video. We are standing in front of the backyard pond, obviously, because there are some things going on in the old backyard pond concerning the fish population and the, the, the health and well-being of the fish in this pond. So we're gonna kind of explain all this as we go along, so don't worry if you're kind of lost because it did just come out of nowhere. Before we dive in the video though, I wanna give a big special shout out to the video sponsor, which is Anchor. We're gonna talk more about that company and what they do and the huge piece of equipment that they provide me and Badger with. We're gonna talk about that a little bit later on in the video, but big shout out to them for sponsoring today's video. So I was on the phone the other day with this local kind of like a fish hatchery type deal. And a fish hatchery, they specialize in, obviously it's a hatchery, so they have baby fish, they have bait fish, they have different kinds of fish you can buy and stock in your ponds. What they also do, this specific one, they give you advice on how to handle and maintain your own private pond. So I was on the phone with them yesterday, kind of explaining the situation. And it turns out, Badge, we messed up. Okay, we messed up big time. Because what me and Badger have done, we've put, we, we're estimating around 40 or 50, right? Yeah. Bass, largemouth bass, into this pond. And now we're pretty sure there, there, weren't, there weren't that many that had survived from the original stocking. But we put, we think there's too many fish in this pond and not enough bait fish. Now, if you guys will remember back in the day when we first got this property, when we walked around the edge, there was just thousands of brim. Thousands. Well, you walk around the pond today, and you don't really see Bram at all. They're like running, hiding for their life. So Badger and I have an idea of something that we can build and put in this pond that's gonna end up helping this bait, these bait fish have some kind of sanctuary and can get away from the predator fish. We're also gonna be bringing out that fish hatchery one day here real soon and stocking thousands and thousands and thousands of more bait fish in here. So we're gonna correct all the issues that we got going on. Now this adventure takes us in town. Let's go to the store, see if we can find everything we need. All right, so Badge, this is kind of your thing here. You're the one who discovered this, these little weird fish things. So what are we gonna need? Cause you, you're making it seem like it's pretty simple. Yeah, it's, okay, okay. Pool floats. Pool floaties. Pool floaties. Okay. Milk crates. Milk crates. Cement blocks. Cement blocks and rope. Yep. Right, well zip ties too. So five things. Yep. Kind of simple. Although I'm trying to, I'm having a hard time picturing what this is supposed to look like in my head with those ingredients, but let's get the ingredients first and we'll, we'll take this thing one step at a time. All right, this is a, not exactly a milk crate, but this is kind of, this is something, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fish, fish cage? Look at there. Underwater floating fish cage, maybe? I don't know. That might be what this is going to look like. I really just don't have any idea. Maybe we could spray paint them too, you know? Like, uh, aren't fish attracted to a, a couple colors? I think so. I think fish can only see a couple colors. But I think like red is one. I don't know. I could be completely crazy. Y'all let me know in the comment section. But I have a feel, I feel like I've heard that fish are attracted to like red or something like that. You know, when you go to get a section of rope and there's, 800 ty types of rope. I just don't know like what we should get here. You sound like a robot, dog. What we should get here, <laughs> rope. <laughs> I don't know what kind of rope to get, man. How strong does this rope need to be? I don't know. This kind of looks cool. It's got an interesting look to it. Yeah, it's unique. Does it, it doesn't need to be very long, right? No. At all. No. This is 50 feet, so this would be like more than enough. Right. In fact, we probably don't even need that much. I don't know. What about this? Let's look at some quality yarn. That's 100 foot. Frick it, I'm sticking with what I know. 50 foot, <laughs> looks kind of cool. Nice. You like that? Yeah, big fan. Can you step on these? Yeah. Oh, oh wow. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah, I'm surfing. Look at these little mini center blocks. I've never seen just the one before. Normally it's like the double, you know? Yeah. That's cool. All right, well we need two of the oh, gosh. <laughs> Ooh. This is how people uh, <laughs> break things. <laughs> Hold on first, let me get up quick. Ah. Oh, ah. Ah, them veins popping. Ah. Oh. Ah. Gosh. <laughs> Woo. Um, one more thing? Zip what? ties. Zip ties. Is that it? Floaties. Floaties. I don't know if Lowe's has pool floats, man. They got pool floats. Yeah? You sure about that? These work? I think so. Packaging looks a little a little cheap, but it does say extreme weather ties. Okay. What do you think makes it an extreme weather tie? 
Aren't all these the same? <laughs> I don't what makes it retains tensile strength at low and high temperatures? Okay, that's good. But it's well, going to be in the water, though. As so. long as it's not biodegradable. As long <laughs> as it's crap for the earth, it yeah. should work. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah, it probably says, do not put in your fish pond. <laughs> but we won't read that. Just act like we didn't see that. <laughs> Bro, you got lucky, man. <laughs> we, been, we just, there's like a random section of pool noodles over here <laughs> around no other pool stuff. So I'm just going to get, I don't think we need a lot of pool noodle for this. No. We probably only need one, but just for color's sake, just so we have options. Yeah. I'm going to hit it with the blue and the green. And if we have any leftover, I mean, we'll just go swimming in the pond afterwards, right? Oh, yes. Just have a little pool noodle fight, right? We don't, uh, we don't, uh, no. I haven't seen you in so long, man. It's yeah. been a long time. People behind the camera will never know, but I haven't seen Badge in like 10 days, so it's kind of weird. <laughs> Anyways, got all the material. Let's buy this stuff. This is going to be pretty cheap, by the way. Yeah. Like 50 bucks. Yeah. Maybe maybe a little, well, just to make one, it would be less than 50 bucks, but since we're making two, it's probably somewhere between 50 and 100. Let's buy this stuff. Let's go home and let's start the build. But before we build these crazy little things, first, I want to talk to you guys about Anchor and this big, beautiful gal right here. This bad boy right here is the Anchor Powerhouse 2800. It is a reliable, portable solar generator. This thing is designed to charge not only your personal electronics, like a cell phone or something like that, you can also power a, like a, an appliance, like a mini fridge or something like that. Thing works anytime, anywhere, perfect if you're an adventurer like me and Badge. This product comes from Anchor, which is America's number one charging brand with over 65 million users around the globe. It stores a whopping 777 watt hours, which is enough to charge your phone over 55 times or to power a mini fridge for over 10 hours. With the reinforced structure on the eight corners, the rugged design is perfect for road trips and longer expeditions. If you guys wanna check them out and get your very own Anchor Powerhouse like this, make sure you click the link right in the top of the description and you can save $100 on one of your very own. This thing is gonna be on every adventure that me and Badger go on this year. We're thinking about doing more like camping type things, overnight style challenges, and with this thing right here, it's a game changer. Big thank you to Anchor for sponsoring today's video. Guys, go check them out. So, first things first. I want to paint these guys because fish are attracted to red. At least that's what I've read. Huh? At least that's what I've read before. I swear fish like red. You're, you're like not agreeing with me at all. I feel like that's something that's like common knowledge. I thought that they were attracted to red on lures. Well, but I'm, but it, you know, like attracted to red. I, I think that's just kind of the theme here. I've heard that women are attracted to red. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding! Oh! How do you think Holly's gonna feel about this grass being a little red? Big fan. A little redder than it was yesterday? Yeah. yeah these look cooler already. They do. Like, it's like a two tone. It's got black and red. Yeah, this was the freaking move, man. While those are drying, we need to make some pool noodle cuts here, so. You think. We don't need to secure these to the baskets. We just need to make some cuts and just like leave them basically just free floating in there. Is that what you're saying? We could do one of two things. We could do that or we could put it that, put the rope through the sections we cut so it's between the cement and the plastic. What? That just sounds way complicated, man. I, I don't even understand what you're saying right now. Where'd you get this knife from? Freaking Dole Town? Where'd you get this freaking knife from? <laughs> I can't even cut a damn foam pool float. Good lord. Hold that for me, dog. Right. <laughs> <laughs> ah! So, yes. oh, yes, you got in there. So I'm thinking like, you know, like this could fit on the inside, right? right like right there and right there. Okay. Sizes like that. I, like I don't that. know. I think I'm just having a hard time visually envisioning what these are supposed to look like. I think everybody else watching this is probably struggling too. Well, you gonna so, find out. I mean, yeah, it's all gonna come together, but we definitely have to make more cuts of pool noodles. Okay, so the finished product. Boom, right here. Fish Hotel. So we've got the two crates. They're obviously painted. They're zip tied, as you can see, all around. And we've got our floaties on each side. Now, the funny thing is, me and Badge designed, inadvertently, two completely different fish hotels. This is what I had in mind when we set out to do this today. Okay, this is what he had in mind. So he made like an oblong one with a bobber on it. Nope. <laughs> you made a tall one with two floaties on the top piece. 
So like this one's gonna be sub suspended yep. up like this, rope down here to the center block, which is on the bottom. Mine's gonna obviously be sitting up like this suspended with the rope and a center block. So probably not gonna make a difference one way or the other. I mean, there's two different designs, but they're gonna do the exact same thing. They're gonna give bait fish the opportunity to swim in to this small little hole and just be safe in there. You know, they, as long as they're in there, a predator fish is not gonna be able to get them. So hopefully this is one of many steps that we're gonna take that are gonna help you know, the bait fish population. But now we gotta fashion some rope, get center blocks and kind of figure out where we wanna put these things and see how it's all gonna look when it's done. All right, let's see, let's go ahead and tie it around this. Don't black widows love center blocks? I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of terrifying. I'm gonna do a double square over under knot because that's what my Grammy taught, taught me to do. That's what my Grammy taught me to do. Shout out to Graham on the Gram. She'd be on that Gram game though. Double knot status. Boom, so there you go. That's gonna sit on the bottom. This thing hopefully will float. You know what I was just thinking about? Wow, that's my dog. I thought it was like a bass blowing up or something. Yeah, that's awesome. That'd be real good for the fishing. Anything, Badge? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so that's this is where it's gonna look like underwater. She's gonna, this is gonna be floating up off the bottom. That's gonna be on the bottom. So the only thing to do now is to toss it in there, right? And yep. Just, I, I, what I'm worried is that we're gonna throw it in a spot where it's not deep enough. Cause this is like, this is like four feet high. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We may even wanna throw this off the edge here when we know yeah. it's a little deeper. Yeah. You know? Plus there's some artificial brush piles that we've already built. Trying to remember where that brush pile is. It's more like out that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chuck it, just give her a send. Give her a send. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so that was my fear. That was definitely one of my fears. So it's not quite deep enough right there. Wow, my delta is just going ham. Let's go ahead and rig up the other one. So we're gonna do some fishing in this video. I wanna show you guys kind of what we're talking about, how our fish are kind of getting not quite unhealthy, but they may be. We're gonna do some fishing here in just a minute, catch some bass and show you guys what we're talking about. But let's go ahead and rig this one up, chuck it out here, and we can get in the kayaks and kind of adjust them, drag them out a little bit further, get them to where they need to be. You gave yourself a very short leader, my guy. I messed up a little bit, <laughs> but okay. keep in mind this thing is taller. Yeah, you do have a tall one, so, so you're gonna have to account for that. Let's see if you can actually get yours to Sink and then suspend, because I was not able to on the first try. Sink and suspend, dog. Sink and suspend. All right, well. Send it. There's like a shallow flat I don't want to hit. Well, yeah, more to your left, I would think, than, than straight. Will it sink? That's really unfortunate. <laughs> well, dude, we, either we suck at this, or we're just not doing it right. I think both of our cinder, oh wait, no, hold on. It's starting to, I don't think it's going to no, go it's well. not. It's settled in the dirt a little bit. We literally, like that one needs to be three feet out that way. Yeah. And that one needs to be three feet out that way. We and they both off would the have, dam. We, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of things that we should have done differently just now, but let's uh, let's correct our mistakes and actually fish some, buddy. Yeah, let's do it. So we got ants on the paddle, eh? We did. Oh, Onto your feet. Oh wow, I just threw dirt all over myself. <laughs> yeah, you, you guys are probably wondering why that kayak is out there. Well, uh, the answer to that question is always have your GoPro running, kids, because I flipped it over and there was a gosh darn wasp nest that attacked me. So I had to retreat and then it was over. Oh, oh, oh wasp in here too. Not as many though. That's, well, I, I think we have a piece of cord. Oh my God, there's like a hundred of them. Wow, big nest. I don't know how we didn't just get tore up, dude. There's like a billion of them. Look at that big old nest, dude. I think they're just chill. They're just chill wasps. Bam! Bam! Yep, I got him. There's one. That's why they don't bite me, Badge, because they know I'm daddy. Well, I just killed the only two that I saw that were alive. All right, well, man, this is a hell of a start here. Oh, man, I haven't been this thing in a hot minute. Oh, wow. That's how you flip. Did you give me a shove off there first, matey? Uh, oh. Yes. All right, let's see if we can fix up these little fish hotels. 
I don't think either one of these hotels is going to take a lot to get them to where they're actually under the water. They honestly serve the purpose like that. But it will be cooler to have them under the water, though. Just a couple inches. Yeah, that's all I can give you. <laughs> wow, big fish right there. I hope I just spook every fish. That way we can't catch any. Yeah, gosh, this thing is really close to being right. You guys can see, I mean, this is what it's going to look like underwater. I mean, it's just a little, a little box with holes in it, you know? It's not exactly fancy here, but it's what these fishies need. Pull it some. Oh, I almost got it. That center block's heavy. Man, it's almost. It wants to go down so bad. Let's try right here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Boom. Kinda. I mean, I'm not really sure how far below the surface do we want it to be. Well, that's an inch, it's an inch below. Boom. So that one's good. That one did have to come out a little bit further than I thought. That one's good to go right there. Boom. And we'll be able to see it so we can avoid getting snagged on it. This is probably going to provide also a really good place that predator fish are going to want to hang out around, you know, because there's going to be bait fish in these little things. So here's to hoping. Oh, boom. Got them. And that's exactly what they should look like right there. So you think fish will just naturally congregate towards stuff like that? Yeah. Cool. Boom. Ah. Yeah. Power strokes, baby. Oh. Get this canoe moving. Could you pull me up, sir? Yeah. Let me grab onto the child bar. <laughs> There's a lot of freaking wasps out here, bro like everything in here yeah like but a, like hepatitis c and stuff. dude come on man. that's the easiest hepatitis to deal with dog I'm kidding i don't know if that's true ah uh, whoo now it's time to fish bro let's catch some fish man because either we're going to catch an unhealthy fish or we're just going to catch an absolute donk that donk. completely nullifies everything we're trying to do here you gonna fish too if you let me we, I don't know. Well, we're really just on a mission. We're not fishing against each other or anything. We just need to catch a couple fish and see what the average size is these days. Trench on, Texas rig, springtime. Pretty much can't go wrong with that. Oh this, my Lord. wow. That feels decent. Jeez. Woo. Did you hear how he loaded up on that? Yo, get him in the boat. Come here, little buddy. Now, see, this is a good example, folks. All right, here we go. Wow, these fish are so aggressive in here. Now, check out how skinny this fish is, right? Long, skinny, pale, dude. That's one of the palest fish we've ever pulled out of this pond. Thanks. Wow. So, now, this is, this guy isn't unhealthy skinny. And there's always a chance they're just post-spawn, which is why they're skinny. But I'm just saying, it feels like the more fish we catch out of here, you know, they're just, they seem to be kind of on the skinny side. Oh, my guy was hooked good. Beautiful fish, though. Nice coloration, although you got a little sandy on the way in. Man, I just got to that brush pile out there that we built, and there he was. <laughs> this is actually a fish that we're going to be moving. This is the kind of size of fish we'll be moving to the secondary swamp pond Dude, at some yeah, point in time. That's crazy to think about. It is crazy to think about, because we are going to make this place into a true trophy bass factory. But to do that, we have to improve things like bait conditions for bait fish you know protected areas for bait fish and we also have to kind of cull the smaller ones out like that one would have been one that we're going to send to the secondary pond in the swamp once we get that whole thing taken care of so all right good start man we were just thinking maybe we made too much noise with the canoe i think we're no, good i, I, I we're paddled fine. right over top of that so these fish are freaking juiced up ready to go man let's catch some more i need to check my line it looks like it might be doing something uh -oh. get him got him Ooh, another skinny guy, I think. Skinny guys. Yeah, we're definitely proving our point right now. I mean, these aren't bad fish, they're just a little skinny. Woo! Good job, man. Got him. All right, another skinny guy. That's another swamp donkey right yeah. there. Future future swamp donkey. That's He's got a sure. freaking noggin on him, though. It does have some snog. A little birthmark, maybe a little bacterial infection. Yeah, that's a straight up hep right there. Yeah. But it's all good. 
Well, let's uh, hold on. Let's examine him a little bit more. Oh, okay. So he is kind of skinny. Yeah. Whenever their stomach goes in, just a yeah, little bit. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. They're not unhealthy. It's just they're not like trophy bass, like you were right. saying. We got to get out ahead of the fact that they might be yeah. heading towards being unhealthy. Right. That was a mouthful of a sentence, but you guys know what I'm saying here. True. It's not that our fish are extremely unhealthy. We we're just starting to notice when we catch fish that they're skinnier than we'd like them to be. We'd like every fish in here to be a butterball year round. Now, obviously, oh. seasonal changes and stuff. Did he get you? He got it. Fine. Seasonal changes. They're gonna gain weight, lose weight, spawning cycle type thing, feeding up for the winter. Blah 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 blah. But I want these fish to be butterballs year round. I don't, I don't know. They make their collars different. Green too. You might want to shock them more. Thirty what? Thirty five hundred or? Oh, 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 you're talking about classic. Classic, yeah. Wait, where, where did you get him at? Oh, God, I got a fish. <laughs> and now he's hung. Oh, I got him. <laughs> We're over here talking about crypto. <laughs> Another long, skinny one. Yeah, he's, I mean, he's healthy, but they're, I mean, they're kind of skinny. They're not like, whoa. What the heck? A tree literally just broke in half back mm -hmm. there. Well, Daryl, you're our good luck charm. This is the biggest one we've caught. Look at that freaking wound he's got right there behind mm -hmm. his little uh, mm -hmm. thing. Look at that. Probably where that otter's just going to town. <laughs> yeah. We've been finding skeletons all over the place from that otter, man. He is just oh, no. on our catfish big time, which is fine because I kind of want to thin those out anyways. Well, this is the healthiest fish that we've seen today. I would classify this one as healthy. Yeah. He's borderline skinny, but you know, for the time of year and everything, if he's post spawn or she's post spawn or whatever, that one I'd probably keep in this pond. Yeah. Well, this is about the limit of the size I would keep in this pond. Anything smaller than this is going to go into the secondary swamp pond. Frick yeah, man. That was crazy. Stuff. We were talking to Daryl and man, he just he just laid into my trench hog. I think I was kind of wrapped around something too. I luckily got it out, but three fish, man. Three kind of skinny fish. I think you guys are starting to kind of get the point of what we're what the mission of all this is. What do you got here, buddy? It kind of looks oh. like a that's, a, that's a healthy little guy. That could be a or, humpback. Could be a humpback. Nah, just a little thumb. Just a thumb. That's another one we want to keep though, in this pond, probably. Yep. Look at his, under his oh. chin. God, he's got some stuff going on too. Dude, what do you have in your pond, man? <laughs> I know, man. We I, might need to have somebody come analyze the water sample. Yeah, there's some, I don't know. Your finger's just all over that too. Yeah, I'm catching straight, that. Straight hip. Yep. Well, uh, besides that, a little skinny, but yeah, not unhealthy, just borderline. Yeah, I think. Well, uh, he's got a noggin on him. He's got snog. That's all we want. My guy's snog. got some snog. <laughs> well, good job, man. At least they're eating. That's the good thing. That is the truth. The problem is they're eating fake food and not real food. So we need to need to do better with the real food in this pond. I yeah. think. Yeah. Yeah. Fatten these fish up a little bit. Yeah, we got some stuff on the way. What are you doing? What's this fat here? What's the strat? I thought huh? you were gonna flip it up and like catch it like I a real will. G. Sure, Please man. do it and throw that hook into my crotch. Oh, you mm. almost got me. All right, so mission accomplished. We got two fish hotels. I don't know how we started calling it that, but I kind of like that. Yeah, kind of makes sense because it's, we want them to come in there and have a sanctuary away from predator fish, but then they're hopefully they're gonna move on eventually and get eaten. Eventually, just all in good time. So, phase one of the pond, increasing the bait population, increasing the fish size, day one is complete. Task one is complete. That's putting a couple fish hotels out here. But the next steps along the way are gonna be stocking this pond with a few different types of bait that I have coming. That's gonna be coming real soon. So make sure you're smashing that thumbs up button. Make sure you're subscribing. That way you guys don't miss every step of the way here. So we got a great pond. We've got a lot of nice sized bass in here, as you guys have seen. We've got a secondary pond brewing. Where we're gonna move some smaller bass. So the efforts that we're putting into this pond are definitely helping. We're getting some numbers, we're getting some size. But with a pond, you're gonna have to kind of constantly adjust to cater to the, the fish that you have in here. So now we need more bait and we're gonna take care of that problem real soon. So the fish are a little unhealthy, but not quite unhealthy, if that makes any sense. We're gonna catch this problem before it gets bad. Now the rash that's going around in here, the fish rash. I got a little fish, fish rash on the finger. Do you? Yeah, you see that? Wow, that's gross. Will you slurp that off for me? No, God, no, I won't. But I'll refer you to a doctor. Thank you. In my healthcare network. Thanks. But anyways, uh, there's something going on with the, the rash. If we start seeing that more often, we may have to get somebody to come out here and check that out. Yeah. But that would be a good video. That'd be fun to do. So anyways, 
Hope you guys are enjoying the content. I love you. Thank you for watching. Big shout out to this, to you girl. You gonna let me not do it again. Video sponsor. Anchor. Big shout out to the video sponsor, Anchor. Remember guys, if you wanna check them out and check out your own powerhouse or any of the other pieces of equipment that they sell, there'll be a link right at the top of the description. Go check them out. They provided me a badge with an amazing piece of equipment that we're gonna be using for years to come. You hear that? Years. You're gonna be with me for years. I'm right? never leaving. Never leaving. Love you guys. We out.